This is Heavy Conversation with Bruce and Jody, a podcast where we talk about being a big guy in today's world. I'm Bruce. And I'm Jody. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> What's up, Bruce? Hey, Jody. How's it going? Good. How are you? I'm good, man. We uh, we had some friends in town. Um, nice. You know, just kind of uh, uh, came in and, uh, uh, you know, last minute sort of. We knew they were coming in over the last few days, but um, didn't have an exact date. And then we found out okay. uh, yesterday that the yesterday the day before day before that they were going to uh be in town so it was like you know one, one day note one day's notice which is totally fine mm-hmm. because uh well for one reason it's really nice to have people in town have friends yeah. visit and all yeah. of that but also because it kicks you into high gear to actually uh clean oh yeah yes yep. and um <laughs> my house always kind of looks a little bit like a hurricane came through because <laughs> Well, you yeah, know, I've got three kids and yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, uh, we sprang into action, Sean and I, we basically just like did everything cleaned from top to bottom landscaped even. Oh, like, geez. yeah, I know. I know it was out of control. You took so. a lot of projects on all at once. We did. We did. It felt like time. And you know, you've got some of those projects that are just sitting around waiting to be done. Like yeah. we had this sign you know our address sign that would go up on our house uh, we had bought one a couple of years ago and uh, got it off etsy or something it was this custom thing and put it up and it got hot and it cracked in the heat so we told the person who made it and they sent us out another one that was made in a different kind of material okay now that sign has been sitting on the counter in the kitchen for a good year and a half <laughs> and it was time. And so uh, we went out, put it up three minutes, took three minutes to do. It's one well, of those like, things to put it up. Yeah. On. I was like, what yeah. happened? I was like, did it break in three minutes? No, no. <laughs> took three minutes to, to put it up. It was one of those things where it sat there for a year and a half. Uh-huh. Nothing got done. And yes, then uh, go out three minutes. It's done. So, you know, it's one of those things. It's, it's nice to have uh something or someone kind of push you to get things done so mm-hmm. uh all of that aside it was fun to have friends in town and all that so nice yeah, yeah it's always yeah it's always kind of the motivation is when friends are coming over it get it like because when it's just you or you and you know your your little family it's not it, like it's not a big deal that's just how you live because like my apartment is never really dirty it's just like a little cluttered because I don't have a lot of storage space. So sometimes my counter is like the collect all. Right. It's totally. like all my mail and just random things that I, you know, I come home and I set it there and then it never moves. <laughs> it's right. like, I'll have like, there'll be even things that I've like bought and I'll set there and then I don't even really open or use or anything. And I'm just like, what is this? What is that <laughs> little space? It's like this weird Bermuda triangle where it goes there and it, gets lost on my counter somehow (laughs) yeah yeah and then when friends come over it's like okay this stuff need i need to find a spot for these things even if it's another temporary spot but one of the things that we've found that's really been helpful is um lots of uh, baskets and Mm -hmm, bins mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so we actually invested in a few additional baskets uh for different rooms yeah even if it's just kind of out of sight out of mind you just put it in the thing and then yeah exactly exactly it at least looks like it's put together and that that works yeah so. absolutely yeah i think my yeah. my whole plan was to have a like this shelving unit in my closet and then when i couldn't find mm. the shelving like thing that i could just put in there and go mm-hmm. and then i i couldn't find it so i just have not done any more where i could literally like put up shelves instead of like yes like a pre-made shelving unit that goes in there. I could just put up shelves and do the same thing, but no, that's, that's way too much (laughs) effort apparently. Right. Cause it's the literally you haven't, I haven't done any more. And I'm like, well, this is what I would need to have more spots to organize things. And I could, you know, 
put my mail in little, you know, the little slots or do something and get it off the counter and it would look so much better, but it always, it's almost like this anxiety or depression zone right there on my counter, all this crap on my counter Mm -hmm. represents whatever sort of anxiety or depression issues I'm having at the moment. So depending on how big that is, that's how, and then it, you know, (laughs) and it just, yeah, uh, yeah, and it builds up more and I'm like, now it's too big. I can't handle it. Right. Right. Yeah. And then one day I'm just like, okay, I got to just throw it all away and start over. It doesn't even matter what's in it. (laughs) I understand completely. Sometimes you just have to start from scratch. Right. Like it's been sitting there that long anyways. So what's not be important. True. It's very true. So uh, today, the day that this episode has released Mm -hmm. uh, marks the, uh, release of the first episode of season four of what we do in the shadows on oh, fx yes on hulu if you stream it there yeah forever yes <laughs> yes so um it looks like it's going to be a fun season uh i love the show it's it's great you know great humor the characters are awesome um at the end of season three uh i'll, I'll do a spoiler alert if you have not caught up uh-oh. Spoilers are, are put on your earmuffs. Yes, uh, three of the characters left Staten Island <gasps> and oh. kind of headed out to do their own thing. Uh, basically, the the band was breaking up, and one of them stayed to uh, care for basically one of the one of the vampires um, uh, died and was reborn as a creepy baby and. <laughs> <laughs> it stays and he's staying to care for the the creepy baby okay. and uh uh it looks like this season um they are starting a club like a nightclub mm. uh, yeah yeah so very excited to see this and uh uh like i said everybody in the show is great uh harvey Gian, uh who plays guillermo um he's awesome been able to uh interview him a few times and for Chubster and uh, uh, met with him at uh, at a Chubster anniversary party in LA. So yeah. um, the, he's he's been great. They've done a lot of great things with his character and have really, um, uh, I guess, had added so much when they could have kept it really simple, but they've done so much to really grow him as a character. It's been a lot of fun to watch. And uh, He's showing up everywhere. He's in like DC movies now and doing all mm-hmm, kinds of stuff, mm-hmm. voice work and just tons of different things. So it's been really cool to see his trajectory as things uh, move forward. Yeah. It's always nice to have, I mean, he's, I mean, he's not like a big, big guy, but he's a little bit bigger guy. So yeah. Yeah. And some of the um, interviews that I've done with him uh, we've talked about you know body image and I mean when you're when you're in um, you know when you're you're in Hollywood yeah even if you're not a big big guy you're still exactly big guy. yeah he's a big guy and it, yeah yeah and it's so easy to get typecast you know within that because of your body and uh, mm-hmm. they have on what we do in the shadows they've given him really a really good character arc where there have been some kick-ass uh scenes things that he that he's been able to do that uh you, you just don't see out there there's a uh, an amazing vampire fight that uh, <laughs> uh where he just goes in and decimates it's it's glorious i highly recommend if you haven't seen the show see it yeah so it's it's yes. funny and very weird and yeah it is it is yeah <laughs> so i go back to it i kind of forget about it sometimes and then i'm like oh yeah that i forgot i don't know keep watching that because i didn't finish the last season so you ruined yeah. it for me oh oh damn no, it's fine i'm like well, i Wait, said what? spoiler alert i know i was trying not to listen but these headphones make it hard. that's right makes it hard yeah <laughs> yeah so so he's gonna be in the dc uh blue beetle movie um it looks like he's blue also beetle. blue beetle uh it looks like he's also uh voicing uh uh nightwing in the harley quinn series in season three so uh and if you haven't watched the harley quinn show it's it's an animated series but it is not made for children it is (laughs) absolutely for adults and it's phenomenal so uh definitely watch that and uh you'll see why 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 it's so good so yeah he's got a lot of stuff going on and uh it's awesome 
So that's good. In uh, honor of the return of oh. what we do in the shadows, uh, I have a beer that is uh -oh. a uh, very similar theme. It is from Stormbreaker Brewing, which isn't that the one that's down the street from you? Yeah, it's like yeah, the yeah. next block over. Yeah. Well, uh, this one is called What We Brew in the Shadows. Oh. And yes, it's a lager. It says it's a lager with some bite. Hot bite, that is. Uh, Nelson, Sauvin, Southern Cross, and Waititi hops shine through in this tropical citrus and stone fruit expression. Premium German malts, malts provide a smooth foundation for easygoing drinkability. Uh, yes, so um, it's got a vampire on the on the front with a um, looks like a pickaxe and. Uh, the Portland skyline, some bats in the back. So yes, there we go. What is, one more time, it's what's brewed in the shadows. What we brew. Oh, what we brew. I'm like, what we I brew in it? the shadows. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, very tasty, easy going, very smooth, uh, flavorful. I like this. This is one I could I could see becoming a regular, a regular drinker in my rotation. So um, tropical melon lime. Yeah. German malts. Okay. I get the the German malts. Um, maybe a little tropical, you know, but uh, easy, easy. Sometimes you just want easy, easy. breezy. Well, yep, th that's good. Mine. Yes. Um, it's called what is this called? Raspberry blush. E. <laughs> Uh, Milkener Brewing in San Diego. Milkener. Mm. Um, it's a, it's all, it's all uh, got condensation out. Um, it's a Berliner style <laughs> Weiss beer brewed with raspberries and coffee. So it's not Ooh. up your alley with okay. the coffee on it, but something sure. weird. Ow. Open oh. it. All right. I have not had this one. Raspberry and coffee. Is it? mckeller sure m-i-k-k-e-l-l-e-r Ooh, what yeah. is this this is weird i don't <laughs> know that is definitely a lot of raspberry hmm. <clears throat> i don't know i can't tell how if i like this or not mckeller mckeller raspberry. that's how you pronounce it thank you okay. google raspberry blush nice Raspberry blush. Yes. Um, yes. It's a sour fruited Berliner. Oh, 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 you're getting all up close in the, That's in the right. camera. Yep. Hold on. Hold on. I'm coming. Oh, I'm bumping the microphone too. This is going to be, oh, no, oh, 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 too many, too many things trying to do. Okay. And there we go. That'll definitely go. be the shot. Wait till yes. you see this, everyone. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure you saw it. was it a good already. one. It was a good one. Good one. Kind of, kind of hurt my lip, but uh, there we go. Yeah, so this is more sour mm. than I was okay. expecting at first. That's why I'm like, I don't understand. It tastes kind of sour. Hmm. Well, good. So that's a, that's a new one. That's a different one. It's got a yes. person on there using raspberries to put a little blush on their cheeks. Hey. Raspberry blush. Raspberry nice. cl brewery classics. All right. Well. That one's a different one for me. Hmm. If you like sours, I'm sure that'll be up your alley. I didn't get any coffee taste, though. That was the thing I was like trying to. Yeah, I don't know what these people do to prepare. I mean, they must like scrape their tongues, drink water, and I don't know. What? Smell smell coffee grounds, do the whole thing to prepare themselves. Oh, when they're tasting stuff? To Yeah, to say this <laughs> is the flavor. Like, what the hell are you talking about? Yeah, they must they must go through this whole process to make sure that they are you know, set that they can get these yeah. flavors and be like, mm, ah, lemon, you know, smells oh. of lemon rind. I don't mm -hmm. know. Well, yeah, those people, I mean, they do a lot of training and stuff and some people yeah. just have the a more sophisticated palate or they can smell, you know, like people that do, what are they called that do like cologne? Like they come up with all those different. Yeah. I, for that too. Right. 
but yeah, you have, you do training just like when we, when I worked for a coffee company, you know, mm-hmm. we, we do a lot of tasting and trying to just what comes to mind. What is the, what, what do you think of when you, you know, we used to j- joke about like this one tastes like wet dog or this one is <laughs> like dirt, right. you know, like what comes to mind? What are you thinking about? Like, instead of like earthy, you know, right. they, they talk about earthy and uh, stuff like that, but we're like, Oh, it tastes like dirt right it, it tastes like a wet dog or whatever kind of weird yep. yeah we used to always do weird stuff yes <laughs> coffee tasters and yeah yeah so yeah you know, just I, have to kind of develop your palate and you're like okay i can see because then it's like you do it first i think and then you kind of read the description and be like okay because sometimes i think it kind of influences you when you look at the descriptors first yep because you're like oh yeah and your brain just like, yep, it tastes like that now. <laughs> instead right, of, right. Instead of like, I think I taste some raspberries in there. Yeah. But I'm not, I'm not great with berries. I'm just like, it's a berry. I don't know. I don't know which berry it is. It looks like for the, uh, the uh, perfume and cologne smeller, it's like a perfume tester, odor tester. That's a mm-hmm. horrible name. It's an odor tester. I feel like there's a fancier name to that. Yeah, I know. I was thinking some kind of sommelier, but that's yeah, it's like wine. Maybe it's maybe it's something like that. So, who knows? Who knows? If you have that job and you're listening, tell us. Tell us at at Heavy Convo on Instagram. Pardon me. Yes. Yes, and maybe Twitter. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Let us know. Let us know. Yes. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a, 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 you know, normal week, just busting through stuff, trying to get things together. Um, enjoying so, this beer. And it's always back to it. Weird, like projects come up and, um, trying to, I was just thinking about, you know, cause we get like stuff at Bearskin, we get stuff back for like exchanges or returns. And I'm like, mm-hmm. we should do, a like warehouse sale all Ooh. this weird return exchange stuff and just like have like a little summer party and try and sell some stuff and show off the new place and stuff like that so that'd be awesome that may or may not happen soonish nice it's like what why are we keeping all this stuff what are we doing with all this <laughs> stuff like let's just right sell it and get rid of it and you know do like some weird warehouse sale and have a little party so that well, might that would be yeah that'd be fun might happen be nice to get Could, out and yeah visit. yeah i mean just meet some of the local customers that because i'm like it's so funny when you're shipping out i'm like i don't even know this person that lives in the city that's buying my stuff i don't know who, you know it's it's still weird to me like right you know i'm like oh who's this person in portland that bought my stuff that i don't even know sure yeah it's, it's kind of cool <clears throat> yeah you should definitely do that that'd be fun mm-hmm. be fun nothing i mean nothing a, too crazy but yeah yeah still maybe be a, a dj and maybe a no <laughs> there we go <laughs> yes right right a dj set a whole mm-hmm, mm-hmm. light set up it'll be, it'll be oh, yeah it'll be a dance party <laughs> yes yeah well i found out the kind of got me thinking about this is i found out there's a the street fair mississippi street fair that's happening literally on my street there's a big, they have like four different stages and like all this stuff but then i got an email from my apartment complex that mm-hmm. the road is going to be closed right on the side of our building so oh. i'm not sure if we're going to be able to get in and out of our garage Ooh. so i'm like kind of freaking out because i got a lot of stuff to do on saturday but i don't know when or when you know like when the street's going to get closed i'm like kind of freaking out but I think it's cool that there's a, I love street fairs and vendors and all that kind of stuff. I won't be able to probably go to it because I already have a bunch of stuff going on that day, but right. Um, yeah. It's nice that those street fairs are happening again. People are gathering, you know, hopefully semi safely, even though they're outside, mm-hmm. you know, it's still good to be outside and experience the city. I, you know, I was kind of sad because I knew that those were had happened in the past mm-hmm. right on my street, but since i moved there they haven't happened so yeah feels like things are returning a lot more getting out and 
trying to enjoy the world as much as we can yeah, it's, safely. it's nice to get outside oh I, yeah because i went and uh went disc golfing for the first time in a while oh which you know frisbee golfing i love it and i'm like i can't believe i didn't do this the whole time during the pandemic i'm like right, i could have right. gone outside to a park but they they made you so afraid to even go outside into a park i'm like oh yeah i can't believe yeah. i didn't do this this would have been a fun activity to do outside and um I, I was, it was a little rusty the first few times. I was like, how do yeah. I throw a Frisbee <laughs> like this or right, what? Right. How do you do this? But, um, and it was a fun course. It was kind of up in Vancouver, Washington. Mm. So um, I can't remember the name of the park, but yeah, it was a fun time. Um, may or may not have had a few beers in the park while we were doing that. So, all right. Very nice. Um, yeah, it was, it was a good time. Didn't get burned, didn't get sunburned, but awesome. Hanging out with some friends, trying to play frisbee golf was fun. I had to download an app to figure out where the holes and stuff were or where the little cages were because it was not self explanatory at all. So <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, man. where's number six? Where do we go? And there wasn't really anyone out there. Well, like luckily, there's an over app the hill. for everything. Yes, I knew there was. So, um, it definitely helped because I was otherwise we'd just be wandering aimlessly. Yes. But we weren't keeping score or anything. It was just just for fun. And it luckily, because I would have probably lost. <laughs> <laughs> I, do, have you been disc golfing? Uh, I can't remember. If I have done. not. No. No. Yeah, it's kind of fun. It looks like fun though. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty chill. I mean, some yeah. people are a little. Um, fanatical about it and you know they have their their cases of their frisbees and and i have two i have one that it's like a distance one and one's a putter so Ah. i'm i beyond that i'm like i don't it's not (laughs) that i'm not gonna be you know spending 20 minutes just figuring out which frisbee is the right frisbee for this you know right because it's like this one will arc this way this one will arc that way and this Mm. one travels you know i'm like that's too much right just, just throw it <laughs> come on uh, yep uh well sounds like fun it is i mean it's yeah. just kind of an excuse to get outside and hang out that's basically get some exercise walk around a bit yeah and it was it yeah. was hot enough that i was sweating by the end so it's good yeah yeah we uh went out to dinner with our friends um there is, uh, we, I think we've talked about McMinimins. It's a chain that's up mm-hmm, here mm-hmm. Uh, in the Pacific Northwest. And a lot of what they do is um, they take over uh, kind of older buildings uh, that were used for different things. Like uh, they have one right outside of Portland that is a, it's a um, Shriners retirement home, or it was, <laughs> and they turned mm-hmm. it into uh, basically a, it's, it's a hotel with a bunch of restaurants and a bunch of bars and the different buildings, they're all kind of hidden around. They're all unique and different. And, uh, there's one here in Portland that is in what used to be an elementary school called the Kennedy school. And mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so we took our friends from out of town up there and it's just fun to sit outside and, you know, hang and do all that. And you just kind of, I know for me, man, it's just been, you forget what, how nice that is Yeah. with everything that's gone on in the last couple of years. And then, you know, we've got a, a, a little guy here in our house that, so he's going to bed about eight. So it's not yeah. like I'm going out and tearing it up in the late into the night or anything like that. So yeah. just fun. The little things like that, just being able to get out and go and have oh, yeah. some, have some dinner and a drink and, you know, have some fun. It was, it was nice we um we also over the weekend um my wife has been training for um her first half marathon and she did that uh this weekend she did that um saturday and uh was that no no she did she did that on the fourth uh there's a fourth of july run and uh it was, you know, it was really interesting. I think the thing that stood out to me about all of that that I absolutely didn't expect is that there were so many different types of people that were running it. Yeah. And people that you would never expect to see 
uh, running and they were all running in their, their own ways. Um, you know, yeah. everybody has kind of a different gait. So people were, I mean, it was, it was people that you would never expect to, to see out there running mm-hmm. this thing. Mm-hmm. We're, we're coming over the finish line. You know, we were waiting at the finish line for, for her to cross and, uh, just watching as all these other people kind of came through and you could do, you know, you could do like a 5k, you could do, um, you could do the half marathon. You could do a full marathon. They had these different things yeah, yeah. that you could do depending on what you wanted to do. And a half marathon is thirteen point one miles. So, uh, you know, she's that's been a, that's enough. Yeah, yeah, she's been training for it for the last five months or so, and nice. just like found her thing that she likes to do, and it's running. So, she just you know not like trying to destroy records and hit certain times. She's yeah, trying to yeah. just do it and. Uh, enjoy it and you know she she did it and it was amazing you know just to see her kind of make it over the line and do this thing that she's been working on for so long and yeah that's yeah awesome. it's but i mean there were people there who were there were older people there were fat people there were skinny people there were um you know people who um you know looked like maybe they they had some issues with their legs that were still making it across yeah uh, yeah it, there was one woman, this was the strangest thing that I saw the entire time. There was one woman who was running and you could see people from about where we were at at the finish line. You could see about a half a mile away. And okay. so they would come down the street and they were on Savi Island, which is this island out, you know, northwest of Portland. It's kind of where two rivers meet and it's, you know, this big old island and there's a lot of farms and things on it. And so you'd see people running down the street and I saw this woman and I'm looking and she had a trailer, one of those baby trailers uh, that you see on the backs of bikes Mm -hmm. hooked to her chest, like to her waist and she's running with it. Apparently they make those for runners where you can put your kid in it and you can run. And she did the, she did the marathon. I don't know how, how long she went. I didn't see that, but uh, she came running right up and there was a kid right in the back and i was like oh my god wow that never seen anything like that before but that's, that's uh, some it was commitment right for real <sighs> for real so yeah it was uh it was really neat it was actually um it was a lot of fun to just be there and watch people come through and see how happy they were and how excited and accomplished they were to have of course completed yeah, that's a, it. i mean that's a big achievement no matter how you know full half marathons whatever you're doing right that's that's pretty cool and actually seeing it, it, it kind of pushes back against some of those preconceived notions that only mm-hmm, certain mm-hmm. people can do these things. So what was it called? Uh, the marathon itself was called, uh, let me look it up. Uh, uh, it was called uh, the foot traffic flat. And it is actually a, um, it is a, qualifier for the boston marathon oh. so to actually be able to run in the boston marathon which i didn't know any of this until shauna started running you have to qualify to get into the boston marathon so mm-hmm. you have to be able to run at a certain speed i guess or a certain time yep. to uh qualify and uh yeah so a lot of people come from around the country to uh to run this and she was telling me that uh she saw there were some people who were just like she said there was one guy they were running she was running and there was somebody who was at a similar pace as as she was and all of a sudden this guy just bolts through and just blasts through and he takes off and there's a woman on a bike behind him with a camera like filming his every move and i mean he just took off and apparently the the lady was running with her said that's one of those nike people so i'm guessing that that's one of those nike people (laughs) yeah i'm I'm guessing nike sponsors people yeah yeah they do the run but i was looking at youtube videos prior to the race and i was seeing you know there's one that was like somebody from north carolina flew flew from there to portland to do this race so um yeah really interesting to see that and kind of kind of kind of cool very inspiring oh, yeah the savi island flat and the fueled by fine wine is that mm. is that a race or is that just to go out and drinking probably so the 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 one that <laughs> yeah the one that uh, that she did was the uh, the foot traffic flat and it was the 20th anniversary of this of this race and uh, they already have mark your calendars for next year so mm-hmm, july 4th mm-hmm. 
and yeah, it's it's at this uh, it was at this uh, pumpkin patch, and so it was this big old farm with all kinds of good stuff there, and they the runners would come up and they could go all over the farm, they could check mm-hmm. their times, so on and so forth. So yeah, it was uh, it was really neat. Nice. Yes. I don't know how. Uh, yeah, I'm not a runner. That's one one physical activity I'm really not into. I I've tried, I know, but yeah. Not into I've the never running. I've never really tried. I mean, the only time that I ever did that was a very short amount of time in high school when I played football and they'd make us run around the track and that was the closest I ever got and mm-hmm. I remember hating that. So, I don't I don't know. You know, I in my my head my first inclination is is to say that I would not enjoy it. But then I've never yeah. tried. So, you know, who knows? Who knows? It feels like one thing. of those things that I should try, you know? So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. we'll see. We'll see. But yeah, that's all well, I got. Yeah, on that note, no running for me. Um, I mean, I don't know that I'll finish the beer right now, but maybe I'll save it for when I'm done working. Yes, I'm going to finish this one and. Um, watch the show this evening. Oh, well, yes. Yes. That's well, what we do in the shadows. So, all right. Well, thanks, Bruce. Thank you, Jody. Until next time. Until next time. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Thanks for listening to Heavy Conversation. Be sure to like and subscribe on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. Yeah.